Okay, gang, I've put this information on the next several slides for informational purposes only. I'll encourage you to read more about this on your own, but for now, this isn't a stats class, so I'm not going to hold you responsible for most of the slides that I'm going to show you until we get to the slides on correlation, and then we'll need to start paying attention to that. Um, again, though, I would encourage you to read this stuff on your own, but I am going to go through this rather slowly as I review through the, the slides because, for some reason, um, the recording hasn't been working very well with these but let's see what happens. So um, we're not going to look at this. We're not going to look at this. Um, and you're going to start reviewing statistics again in your book alone. This section as well. These graphs. These distributions. Again, you'll read through this in your book. Read through inferential statistics in your book. Read through that. Don't forget that, but that's in your book. Take a look at the information on effect sizes in your book. And then we need to get to correlational research, which is important. Um, correlational research is the most important, um, I shouldn't say no, the most important, but it is probably the most common form of research that we IO psychologists um, use in the field. And basically what we're doing with correlational research is that we are observing and measuring natural variation in variables and looking for associations. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to look at the relationship between variables. So for example, in my own dissertation what I did was I looked at the relationship between um, self-control and counterproductive work behaviors. In simple terms, a correlation coefficient is simply a number that describes a relationship between two variables. So, uh, um, so if I were to ask you, um, let's say on an exam, hint, hint, um, what a correlation coefficient is in words, you would simply say that it's just a number um, that represents the, the statistical relationship between two variables. Um, a couple things about correlation coefficients. First, um, the actual number um, that represents a correlation coefficient can only range between negative one to positive one. Um, and um, two characteristics that we know about correlation coefficients. Anytime you see that number, you'll know what the strength of the relationship is and you'll know the direction of that relationship. In terms of the strength, you can determine um, how strongly two variables are related to each other. And by strength, what I mean is um, how well can we predict one variable from the other? So, for example, in our relationship between self-control and counterproductive work behaviors that I mentioned, if we have a strong relationship, that means if I know the, the values of one variable, um, then um, I can, with good confidence, predict the values of the other variable. Um, and I can determine strength by looking at the number. If the number is close to one, whether it's negative one or positive one, then we have a strong relationship. In terms of direction, what we're talking about is um, the the values of the variable and the direction that they're going. So um, if the values of one variable are going um, in a positive direction, um, and then that means the values of the other variable are also going in the same direction. That's what positive means. Um, and let me say that again because I kind of stumbled on that. Positive um, direction simply means as the values of one variable are increasing, the values of the other variable are also increasing. For a negative relationship, what that means is as the values of one variable are increasing, the values of the other variable are decreasing and vice versa. So they're going in opposite directions when you have a negative relationship. So let me let me explore that just a little bit further. So for the example of um, the relationship between self-control and counterproductive work behaviors, if um, the values of self-control are increasing for a negative relationship, the values of counterproductive work behaviors would be decreasing. It would be going in the opposite direction. One important thing to remember about correlation coefficients is no matter how strong the relationship is between two variables, no matter how strong the correlation coefficient is, that does not mean that one variable causes the other. 
Okay, and in order to make causal statements, we have to actually conduct an experiment. So, and, and in that experiment, an experimenter is going to manipulate the levels of an independent variable, um, and you're going to randomly assign people to conditions. And you just simply can't do that with correlational studies. So, and you're not doing that, so you're not conducting um, an experiment, and you're not able to determine causality. Probably the best way to understand correlation coefficients is to look at pictures or scatter plots of the relationship between two different variables. What you see in front of you um, are five illustrations of the relationship or correlations between two different variables. Um, on top we see some very strong relationships. One um, is a positive relationship and those numbers are 0.9 and, and 0.95 and, and negative 0.95 um, respectively. Um, the, the positive relationship is um, depicted on the left hand side and then the negative relationship is depicted on the right hand side and again the negative relationship simply means as the values of one variable are increasing the values of the other variable are decreasing on the bottom hand on the bottom side um, or the bottom graphs what you see on the very left hand side is a correlation of zero and you can see that um, all of the um, the data points are um, just thrown about in, as in a circle, meaning that there is just no relationship, um, meaning that if you know the values of one variable, you know nothing about the other. Um, there's no relationship there. Um, the bottom two um, graphs there represent a weak a weaker relationship, but actually 0.5 um, in the social sciences is pretty strong. So again, the middle bottom graph, you see a positive, um, moderately strong relationship between two variables, whatever you want them to be. Um, and the example I gave it was self-control and counterproductive work behaviors. And then on the bottom right is a negative relationship. But again, let me reinforce that correlation does not imply causation. And let me give you an example. So what if we found that there was a relationship between considerate leaders and subordinate satisfaction? Does that mean that leader behavior causes satisfaction? Well, isn't it also plausible that satisfied employees could cause leaders to behave nicely? In addition to that, what if there's a third variable um, that's going on here that could explain that relationship? So what if we just had a productive group that is related to both of these variables? In other words, a productive group could lead to both considerate leaders and subordinate satisfaction. So hopefully we have a better understanding of correlational research and um, in a second we're going to go on and talk about the differences between reliability and validity. Take care.